Well, guys, uh, starting episode 100 with an introduction to a new section, the Renaissance. Yay. So, uh, the Renaissance. Uh, this period marks the start of modern history. Muslims still dominate much of Europe and Asia at this time. Uh, the Ottomans in the Middle East and the Mughals of India took Islamic culture to new heights. The Aztecs and the Incas dominated the Americas. In Europe, a new world was coming into being. Europeans questioned their traditions and beliefs. They sailed the oceans, explored new ideas, and European society changed greatly, becoming more complex, free-thinking, and materialistic. Europeans started to emerge from the narrow confines of the Middle Ages to travel beyond the continent. In 1461, European seafarers, traders, and colonists were on the brink of setting out to find new routes to the Far East and to explore and exploit the rest of the world. For the first time, continents were brought into direct contact with each other. In Mexico and South America, the Aztec and Inca empires were at their height. But with the arrival of the Spanish, the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan was destroyed and the Incas were forced to retreat to the mountains of Peru. By 1533, the Spanish had turned the native population into slaves, and the original inhabitants were nearly wiped out by disease and mistreatment. The invaders turned their attention north, but it was some time before North America could feel the real effects of their arrival. African civilizations also came under European influence, but it was confined to the coast. The heart of Africa remained undisturbed. China was still ruled by the Ming Dynasty, though the arts flourished, society became stagnant under this rule. In Europe, the movement now called the Renaissance was fueled by Greek scholars fleeing from the fall of Constantinople, who brought with them knowledge of the ancient Greece and Rome. Uh, Europeans first arrived in North America in 1500, though colonies were not really started until the 1600s. The Mississippian culture was in decline from the 1450s, and the Pueblo peoples of the southwest were now past their peak. Other native peoples were having their own political and religious problems, as well as matters of trade with other tribes, all the time unaware that the white man's impending threat to their way of life. In Mesoamerica and South America, disaster strikes the entire region. The richly advanced civilizations of Mexico and the Andean regions are generally on the upswing when the Spanish arrive. But both the Aztecs in the 1520s and the Incas in the 1530s were quickly subjugated by these strange foreigners, whom they had welcomed at first. Trickery, followed by European diseases, killed millions. The Spanish and Portuguese quickly took over, establishing plantations, mines, and cities in search for gold, wealth, and glory. The majority of early immigrants were actually Africans brought over as slaves to work on the plantations. But it was the European bosses and priests who, by 1600, ran what was to become Latin America. Those indigenous Americans who survived were suddenly subjects to new masters. Uh, Europe was changing fast. In Florence and Amsterdam, power now lay in the hands of traders. In many countries, a new form of religion had started. Protestants fought off the Catholic rule. Cities and businesses grew, and with them new social habits and possibilities. European nations and empires were wealthy and powerful at this time. New products flooded from far-off places, and new ideas emerged. Despite the risk of upsetting rulers, Europeans were m sure of themselves. Yet there was much turmoil. They were also courageous, sailing to the ends of the earth to explore new routes and trading opportunities. Uh, in Asia, in the early 1400s, Chinese expe uh, expeditions had sailed to India, Arabia, and Africa, yet the Ming Empire soon closed its door to oversee missions. Japan reached new heights, although it was isolated from outside affairs. In Southeast China and India, Europeans were tra making trade outposts and influencing Asian society. Russians were colonizing Siberia, and Mughals trade uh, ruled with India, creating a tolerant, successful society. And the countries such as Tibet, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaya, and Indonesia advanced cultures were making great strides forward. Uh, in Australasia, uh, the Polynesian islands continued much as before with uh, some a little bit of exploration. In Africa, many tribes became nations during the 1500s and towns grew in number, stimulated by growing trade between nations and with Europeans on the coast. By 1502, Africa was also feeding the slave trade. Uh, in the Middle East, 
uh, in the 1500s, the Ottomans reached their highest points of development and conquest, becoming the dominant force in the Middle East. They clashed with another rising power, uh, the Safavids in Persia. Both empires were culturally sophisticated and wealthy.